Hi, this is Marlene, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Whether you're watching a video or listening to a podcast, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. Links to videos or mp3 files can be found on MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Go to MarlenePardo.com for information on new book releases. I narrate several podcast series that can be found on major podcast platforms and can also be listened to via Alexa, Sonos, and other home systems. Look for Supernatural Storytime for scary storytelling, Nightshade Diary for classic horror and adventure stories, Stories of the Supernatural for interviews with different guests on the show. If you want to get noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird, you can visit Strange Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com or find us on Blogspot. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. This is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicle Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing today? Good, I hope. I'm doing good. As you can see, I have my Stories of the Supernatural t-shirt, which is very confusing because I didn't realize when I had it printed that having it all over the place was like a, was like a having a psychedelic trip back into the 70s or whatever. But anyway, uh, I know people have been t- <laughs> texting me about my chickens and the chicks. One small problem, this, you know, besides it being rainy weather, uh, right now we've, for the last couple of days, we've been ex- prepare, anticipating Tropical Storm slash Hurricane, then Tropical Storm Elsa, which came up the west coast of Florida. And um, luckily, where I live at, uh, we've just gotten a strong winds, but a lot of rain. And when it's been raining, and then you get a lot of extra rain, bottom line, I wasn't going to go out there to film the chicks. I mean, as it was, I had to have like a, a plastic tarp over where I kept them. Uh, plus, uh, for for those of you who didn't see my show, two shows, um, that's how I twisted my knee was because I stepped in a big mud whatever and I was like, uh, you know, and I didn't fall down, but I twisted my knee really bad. So I'm really, really careful around mud now. Incredible, but yeah. So I promise as soon as the weather clears up just a little bit, okay, um, I'll be out there to video the chicks, which are really small because, like I said, this is from the little tiny bantam hen that got killed. So they're like a six of them. The other two eggs of the eight, they haven't hatched. Uh, and I even put them under other broody hens and uh, nothing happened, you know. But that's what happens. Sometimes these eggs are not fertilized. But anyway, I've got six chicks, but they're really, really, really small like that. So, yeah. But anyway, let's get on to the, the good part. Oh, and before I forget... I do want to talk about a new sponsor for the show. Okay, this is a um, a service. It's called Primary Notary. All right, and basically, what Primary Notary does is, besides the actual, you know, that obviously that they do notary services, is that they are a mobile notary services. And what that means, especially nowadays is that um, with so many people doing, you know, needing documents uh, notarized, whether it's personal stuff um, or, you know, if you're doing any type of mortgage, closing, refi, even uh, automobile purchases that you need uh, a mobile notary services, they go out. And basically is that they go out when you need it, where you need it, and they travel to your location in the state of Florida at a time that's suitable for you. They're fast, friendly, reliable, and above all, they're very professional and they keep your privacy in mind. They can also assist you with uh, immigration forms, virtual assistant services, title processing. Uh, They can officiate at your wedding. Uh, Again, they also have what's called remote online notary services, which means that you can get the notary service done online. You don't even have to do the face-to-face thing. Also, they have a bilingual staff, which are fluent, by the way, in both English and Spanish. All their notaries are background checked, certified, bonded, insured. They're available seven days a week, available after hours, weekends, holidays, etc., etc., because there's always somebody out there that, you know, the 11th hour is when they need things done. But guess what? It's great when you can get somebody to actually respond. Um, you can find them at primarynotary.net. 
email them at hello at primarynotarynotdebt or you can call them toll free at 844-423-7773. Again, that's primarynotary.net. Again, now let's get back to the best part of the show, which is I'm going to talk to you about my guest. And this is a first time guest here on Stories of the Supernatural. This is a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Cerny. And I'm going to give you some bio information on him. He, I, by the way, I, I love his, his bio. Uh, he was awarded a poetry scholarship by Gwendolyn Brooks, the Poet Laureate of Illinois, and he graduated from Northeastern University into the economic downturn of the 1980s unemployment. For a few years, I, he stumbled from one soon to be going out of business employer to the next and decided to try to fail in his own self-employment. Uh, he founded a legal word processing called OnDisc. It was small, but surprisingly successful. Now, parallel to this company, he partnered with his musical muse named David Bell and created Persona Records. It's one of the earliest house music labels in the United States, producing legendary DJ Frankie Knuckles, vinyl releases, and licensing music via his own band, Danny Alias. To this day, Danny Alias is bootlegged throughout the world. Now, in 1988, he met Jeffrey Nelson, and together they set off on an antique odyssey. And from 1990 to 1998, he operated, uh, along with Jeffrey, the Wrigleyville Antique Mall, as in WAM, W-A-M. Uh, it's a modern multi-dealer vintage stores in Chicago. Uh, they have tens of thousands of sales, countless fails, and the revelations of too many startling stories to tell in a single night of vintage debauchery. But we'll see how much we can get out of him. And he retells a lot of this in the book that he wrote called Selling Dead People's Things, uh, where he documents uh, a lot of the experiences he had. Now today, uh, Jeff and uh, Dwayne, they own the Broadway Antique Market, which is home to 75 top dealers. It's Chicago's largest multi-dealer shopping destination and every bit the vintage department store we hoped it could become, as in that what they wanted. Um, They're there for collectors of mid-century design, um, it's a mini modern mecca for others. It's a fun place to idle away an afternoon. People watch and or try not to buy something. And as for him, and I quote, I'm older and not much wiser, creakier and crankier, and oh, my feet hurt. Thanks for asking, but yes, I still like to sell you a vintage chair. I'll sit later. <laughs> How are you to welcome him? How are you doing today, Dwayne? I am great, Marlene. Thank you for that. I for love your introduction. Your... <laughs> That thing about creak, creak, crank here, my feet hurt. Yeah, I can't identify with that. <laughs> it's the other yeah, day. I was going to ask how your knee is doing. I think oh, let know. me tell you something. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was somebody would have been watching me is what this lady doing, dancing out in the chicken yard. <laughs> and basically what I was trying to do is not eat it into, it was just like a big, mu- and I didn't realize it just had been raining. And, you know, and I did one of those, oh, no, 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 no. And I twisted something in my knee. <laughs> Oh. And um, yeah, it's little by little. I, I like I can't really put my weight on it, so you know, like I look like Quasimodo going around like, oh, I'm dragging one foot. But I, uh, there's no no help for it, and there's only so much ibuprofen you can take before you, it starts to affect your stomach. So basically, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this is one of those things, you know. But and, and then of course my other foot hurts. And people must be saying, oh, you shut up, Marlene. My other foot hurts because, of course, my other leg is because I'm overusing my right leg. So, yeah, such is life. But anyway, the human condition. <laughs> what can I say? So anyway, Dwayne, um, you've, we, you've mentioned you've been doing this for years and years and years and years. And tell me, tell us, tell us what it's like to sell dead people's things because <laughs> that's really what it comes down to because I imagine a lot of your stuff comes from what, like estate sales and things like that? Yes, and I, and I certainly buy things from people who are above ground. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's funny is I kind of stumbled upon that phrase. I, I, I would hear a number of like old-time dealers refer to that, mm-hmm. how I sell dead people's things, and I always thought that's just a, it's a little, it's a little vulgar. But it's accurate. <laughs> throw that out there. It's, a little, it's, a little, it's accurate. I mean, it's blunt, yeah. but but it's but it's accurate. And and I always had that in the back of my head. Going, gosh, that would just be the. Uh, uh, again, years ago, somebody said they wanted to open a store with that name, and I went, well, that. Kind of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have a certain um, type of crowd show up for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little, it's a little dark. It's a little dark. Yeah. 
Um, I always wanted to open up a store that was called Sold, which is everything in it is sold. There's, you come in, there's, there's nothing there. It's all sold. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, so, um, when I was playing around with the idea of, I've, I've written a lot of different things over the years, but I never wrote about what I do. Okay. And I'll tell you how this kind of, how the book came about. And I was able to get into a, a fantastic writing program in New York, um, Mm-hmm. Wow, seven years ago, something like that now. Okay. Um, and it and all the writing you you, you did it right there um, in this person's apartment, um, and uh, and everything had to be true. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, and she and it was it was what was really cool about it was um, she would she would say like you know what write down the five most horrible things that ever happened to you, and then she would go around and she'd look over your shoulder and she'd say okay I want ten minutes on that. And you would write about that. Okay. Um, and there were some incredible stories that came out of it, which actually for your listeners would probably find it enjoyable because there was a, there was a woman who insisted that she had been an alien abductee. No. Uh, it was some really, rare, I mean, wow. And, and some very, uh, many of them very difficult stories, too, mm-hmm. um, about you know, abuse. And, uh, sure. Um, but, but I wrote a story about a, an incident that had occurred to me at, uh, at, a, at a, an estate. Um, and, uh, and I, and I did it, I wrote, I wrote it and I did it and everyone went to use the expression, bullshit. No, oh, <laughs> you're you can't kidding. Write fiction. You can't write fiction. This isn't a fiction class. And I said, no, no, I was there. My partner was there. We have another business partner who was there. This happened. Um, and they just, it, I failed and I've been going every week. I've been doing really well in this class until I got to that story. And I said, oh my gosh, I finally write about what I do and I fail. And so uh, I went okay. back to Chicago, and I rewrote the story 15 times, just for myself. I was, just, okay. I was so angry with myself. Um, and on a lark, I sent it into the New York Times. And darn if uh, Michael Weinrip, who won a Pulitzer Prize, uh, printed it. That's great. So it, it ran, it, and that was called um, Traces of a Man Who Disappeared. So if any of your listeners want to yes. check that out, it's called Trace, Traces of a Man Who Disappeared. Google that. It's on their their site and all over the place, okay. um, and uh, it's just a, a curious examination of a person's life and the things when you're going through the remnants of a person's life and what they mm-hmm. collected and who they were. It's not always uh, your your first assumptions are often incorrect. Let's put it that way. Okay. And it was a really it was a, it was a real learning experience. For me, and I don't want to say too much about the story because people read it and you'll go, "Oh," um, <laughs> um, and it's a bit of an O. Henry type story. Mm-hmm. So you get to the end and you're like, "Wow!" I mean, it's a kick. It's really a kick in the head. It's an eye opener. Um, and I the response was tremendous. Or some people were really upset about it, which was good. If you're a writer, you want to yeah, you, know, you want some type of reaction, uh, uh, right? Yeah, you want yeah, you want some kind of, some kind of reaction and some lovely letters from people really like all over the world, emails from all over the world. Um, and I was, I was just shocked. And I, and I just realized that as you look at the antique business, which tends to be, and you know, we all love the antique road show, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it tends to be a little staid and kind of frumpy. And, mm, um, <laughs> and it's all, it all comes down to like what, uh, I always say like 95% of the books that are out there about the antique business are, are about, Identifying what something is and what it's worth, right? And selling selling dead people's things is not that book. <laughs> yeah. um, that I wanted to kind of dig deeper into it. I wanted to go there. You know, when, when somebody's on road show and they tell you the story that it was their great uncle who was in World War One mm-hmm. and was almost killed, and they came back with this piece of shrapnel that turned out to be, I don't know, you know, something from Himmler. I mean, I don't know. It was always some strange story. Um, you go, wow, that, that's that's fascinating. Um, that always intrigued me. And then I realized, again, this is you know, over the course of doing this for some you know, 30 years, so not every estate I go to and it's a revelation by any means, um, uh, or, or paranormal by any means. Sure. But every once in a while, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. you, you, I, I, I stumble upon circumstances, um, and uh, I, it's kind of like letting the object sell the story, really. Um, if If... if I'm, I'm so fortunate, <laughs> um, and then sometimes I can kind of be, uh, 
pull things together. Um, but you know, it's funny when even in your introduction on this, I, I, and I and I reference it in the book. You know, in in Pompeii when they were doing the excavation in Pompeii, they found an antique store. Really, there was an antique store. I didn't yeah, know that. when they were importing, they were importing things from all over you know, the area, mm-hmm. and people back then even wanted things from other cultures and other yes. times. that's very interesting. So, yeah, so this business has been around for a long time, and I, I think I've turned a little bit of it on its ear, and, and that's what I'm, I think that's what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> well, let me ask you, did um, that story that you wrote, was that the first time that you had had something weird happen, or was that just one of the best stories? Because I know she asked you, what's the worst uh-huh. experiences you've had? Right. Um, no, I think I'm not really sure why I chose that one. It wasn't the first. It, it okay. actually it was probably in point of time. It was probably the most recent. It was at the top of my head. Okay. Um, I thought, wow, that would be a good story. These people need to hear that one. Um, uh, where, yeah, I mean, things had happened to me um, prior. The story in the book about how um, I go to this elderly lady's little little apartment on Lakeshore Drive, mm-hmm. um, and uh, what that what that turns into. That had happened many years earlier. Okay. Um, so I kind of reached into my bag, and um, it's just, I, if the book was really on one of like, the strongest stories in right. there. And then it's a, you know, a, bit, a bit of a parallel, um, I guess, autobiography memoir, mm-hmm. more accurate, which really wasn't my intent, <laughs> per se. Um, initially, I thought I'd put all these stories together, and then... I, I had some. I had a wonderful editor, and they said, "You know, you, you should really weave this into what you do every day, and people might okay. find that engaging." So it's a little bit of a business book. Okay. I know that might sound odd, but I, I believe it is because it just shows you what um, well what it's like to start a business and fail and start and fail and keep at something. Sure. Um, and darn it, you know, every once in a while it works out. Yeah, so, uh, stick-to-itiveness. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I don't include all that in, in, in the book, but I just mm-hmm. I fell on my face many, many times, and I had minor successes with things that I didn't make any money at. Um, the, the record business was one, but um, but I was there to really at the beginning of something, and often at the very beginning of something, there really isn't a lot of money. <laughs> no, there <laughs> isn't. About, there isn't. There is. But it's very, you know, what people don't realize, and I know this it sounds like oh that so trite, but the truth is that even when you fail, you learn something if you're smart. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm not going to do that again. I, I, absolutely, I actually think you learn more from failure than you do from success. <laughs> yes, I really, I, I, I it's, it's painful. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> if, if, yeah. If nothing else is like I'm not going to do that again. No, of course, of um, course, and and I mean, um, even if you have a different type of business, you realize there's certain things that you that's like no, that's that I'm not going to do that. I already found that with that other business. Yeah, but, but there are mistakes you can make that are just applicable. Oh, yeah. Um and uh it's it, it's it's interesting. It's uh, again my, 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 my business partner you know, who's just is fantastic. Um but he's not he was never an entrepreneur like I was okay. um and am. Um and he's much more cautious of things because he hasn't fallen on his face as many times as I have. He's afraid like the next time he's gonna fall on his face. Now I'm like, Well I'm just gonna try it because well what can happen? Yeah, really. Yeah, well, was it that, that worst so, case scenario kind of deal? Yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not you know, suggesting people risk life and limb, you know, but, but I've just had a lot of things. Yeah, I'd really encourage people, whatever it is that they want to do, try it. Put your oh, toe in the water. Sure. Um, and, and, and something like that. This book was turned down by, wow, I don't know, 50, 60 publishers. <laughs> Are you um, serious? I am serious. I am serious. And, wow. and it's going on to be the number one antique and collectible book on Amazon twice. <laughs> That's just once. That's twice. incredible. U- USA and Canada in its fourth printing. Um, it's, it's carried in antique malls and antique stores all over the country. So not just bookstores, but right. antique stores sell it. So, and that's something I stumbled upon a whole different way to market it and merchandise it. And, and actually dealers buy them from me. Right. In other words, you, you, you went outside booth. the uh, bookseller or bookshop yeah. uh, approach. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did it, and because mm-hmm. and, uh, it's still in, you know, as an independent title. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I had an agent. I had an agent in L.A. who was lovely, and, but she just couldn't place it. And she kept saying, "It's a TV show," and I said, "Well, it's not. <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> I want it to be a book." <laughs> at um, least at the beginning, right? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that's a great dream, and I think that was more her dream than mine, and it was like, you know, uh, it's, it's a, yeah. anyway, because um, uh, when you, you know, as you read it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a collection, basically, of short stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think where it's episodic, and I see where people want to go looking at it uh, in, in terms of, in terms of uh, you know, media, but I wanted a book, and I like to write, and that was, a, this it's is an opportunity to write about what I, you know, what I do. Yeah, which is great because that's what you know, in other words. And obviously you have a passion for your business, for what you do, and it translates into the story, you know, the, the experiences, um, which is what I was getting, you know, after so many years. Let me ask you, did you ever, uh, how's this, was the first experience that you had that maybe it was like, was it when you went to some place or after you bought something and brought it back to your shop? What was the what would be the the experience that right, I right that you had some experience that you were like man this something's weird what's going on or you know or oh oh okay um uh, the first I, I would say the first one it was in in in, in, in I would call it in point of place okay <laughs> in a in 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 a, in a, in a, in, a, in a residence and okay. a, in a circumstance later on yes. Um, but I would say much later on, and what's interesting about that, and actually we'll kind of get into that now too, is that the because um, I do have it's a I have a very big store, and upstairs, which I kind of knew at the time when I bought the building, but I really didn't think about it. Part of the upstairs had been a, an apartment um, after the war. Okay. You know, after the war, it was really hard to find any kind of an, any kind of apartment, so they were turning everything into apartments. Well, that part of the store. Lots of stuff goes on, <laughs> really? and I had I had felt it, and didn't really want to make a big deal about it. Or, you know, some not everybody's happy with those that that, that, that uh, statement. Um, you know, I want people to go up there and shop and have fun and you know, buy mm-hmm. something. I don't want them to be you know scared. Um, and then I, at first, I just thought it was me, but over the years, and I've had this building now for twenty two years. Um, uh, I've lost count of how many people who have asked me. And it's interesting because when, what I think it is, I think I've narrowed it, narrowed it down to a couple different things. I've never had it professionally investigated. Okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I want to. But um, uh, but oftentimes people feel that they'll say, oh, you have another employee up there, which I do not. Um, <laughs> and you're like, no. Uh, and that, uh, no. And they, they feel they're being watched, which is a very, obviously, a, a common experience. Okay. Um, but I've also realized because it's an antique store, we have so many things come through there, so mm-hmm. many things. And people have this, I totally believe this, and I know it to be, I just know it to be true. It's a fact <laughs> that there are just, there are people who just kind of expend their energy into objects. And, and mostly it's because they love them. Yes. It's because they love them. It was their, it was a favorite thing of theirs. Mm-hmm. And there's just this resi- so it's. I feel generally it's a very positive thing, at least in my experiences with the store. And so they're kind of energized. They're just it's what it is. It's, I think it's very simple. <laughs> and there are people who are rather sensitive or intuitive. Mm-hmm. Maybe they know it. Maybe they don't. Um, and that's when that connection is made, right there. It's a very right. personal thing. And so when I have a girl will come down, and she'll say. You have this mirror upstairs, and I'll think, oh, she wants to buy the mirror, and it'll be, and she says, has anybody ever talked to you about that mirror? Where did that mirror come from? You know, and, and I had this, I, had an, I think I had an experience. I think I felt something. Um, or it's a photo, or it's a piece of furniture, or okay. it's a little vase, or it's a, and it tends to be, uh, obviously, the more antique things. I, right. I've not stumbled upon too much mid-century modern haunted yeah. <laughs> objects. That's not happened. You know, um, but I, I, I uh, easily 20 people, 20 people who don't know each other, right. all just random. So uh, that is not happenstance. Right. From There's your something. perspective, like you said, these people are totally unconnected one to the other. It's like they didn't go upstairs totally. and all these sides, you know, plus the no. different times. Have you ever had one piece that everybody that you're like, OK, is, is anybody else going to come and tell me something about this piece? Well, the, the, I have a, uh, a story in the book ab- about the death, and it's a bit, a bit of a long story. I'll um, give it briefly. Was just that and that goes back to Wrigleyville for in our first store. Okay. Is that I'd ha- I had this desk, 
um, which had come in. I mean, a guy brought it to us, which is odd because usually we're going to someone's home. Mm-hmm. The guy brought this this desk in, um, and so the people understand what it was. It was rather rather a folk art desk, which means somebody actually made it, and then so it wasn't a mass produced thing. It was an individual, an, an artist, that made this desk, and I'm going to say will be kind, turn of the century, 1890, something like that. Small, it's a small desk, um, but it was a, a partner's desk, which means you could sit on either side of it, mm-hmm. so the drawers would open through, they pay, you could pass through things through the drawers, and really unusual desk, and in the bottom of all the drawers were, were, were these wood-burned symbols. Every drawer had all on the bottom of the drawers, and depending how you put them in, and you couldn't, I always, again, in the book, I call it, it's like, it, it was like, Pig Latin. <laughs> okay. Um, it was, what is it? What language is this? It was just symbols. It made no sense to me, to anybody else. Um, well, so the first thing that happened with that desk is I had, it was down in, in, in the basement, which is not a dusty basement. It's a very modern, clean basement where we would sell furniture. And I had two employees down there who actually, which I think is the point of the story, they did not get along. These are two guys that really did not look working together. And one afternoon, like a Saturday afternoon, they both come running up the stairs, screaming, just screaming. Um, and about that, the, the, some of the drawers had opened, and little balls of light had come out and were bouncing all around the room. Now, this is a basement. There are no windows. There's, right. There are no windows. There's no light. There's no light source there for that okay. to happen. And again, weird, because these are two guys who wouldn't agree on lunch. You know what I mean? <laughs> they wouldn't agree on anything. Yeah. They could not be more different. And one of them quit after it. Really? Now, this, this desk, this desk I would sell three times. So the first two times, people brought it back. What? And, yeah. So, and it would be, I don't want this desk. Can I have my money back? And what would they I tell knew, you? Did they I, tell you why? They went, no, they did not want to say anything, which is a sign right there. Yeah. Uh, silence is an answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. No, it was, I want my money back. Well, yeah, if you're going to return something, too. I want my money back. That's really the topic, right? And, okay. and, you know, that's why I'm still in business. I work with people. That's fine. It didn't work out for you. I don't want, I don't want, take your desk back. <laughs> I don't right, want right, right. Right? Fine. Oh, okay, fine. So, uh, they comes along. I've been in the store. And my manager calls me and she says, oh, there's this lovely woman here. And uh, she, wants, she wants the best price on the desk. And I'm like, sell that desk. You need to sell it. <laughs> you need to sell that desk. This desk needs to go. Um, yeah. And how I tell the story is, from her point of view and the correspondence that I had from her afterwards, because oh, okay. finally somebody was like, buys this desk. The same thing happens to her and uh-huh. her husband. Um, where And it could get a little odd because it, it went from just the light to then the drawers would just come out. Or they'd come in the room and the drawers would be pulled out. Okay. And they'd be like, did you open the desk up? But no, I didn't touch it. And, um, so, uh, oh, and then they come back in and sometimes they'd be closed when they had left them open. So okay. it was that kind of stuff. So um, she, had, she contacted me with, what, what do you know about this? And, of course, I'm like, you can bring the desk back. My first response is, just right. bring the desk You're back. You're thinking, <laughs> yeah, I, I, this road. I've done this before. It, here it comes. Here mm-hmm. it comes. And she said, no, you don't understand. I love this desk. My grandmother had a, a, a partner's desk similar to this. I'd be looking for this desk, a desk like this for years. No, okay. I don't want to bring it back. But what do you know about this desk? And all I could tell her was what I just told you now. <laughs> okay. How I got it and the issues that I had with it and that it was just, in, that writing on it was inexplicable. Um, and it seemed to be that in the correspondence that I had with her uh, not recently, but yeah, after after this, right. um, she just kind of accepted that this was part of what it did and what it was, mm-hmm. um, and it needed to be just accepted. And then it, she didn't have as many incidences once she just kind of accepted it, because okay. that's what it wants to do. Um, and I felt it finally found its home, that it was okay. clearly uh, wanted some uh, uh, attention, but it was a... a probably one of those haunted objects um and again i have to do all this second hand but this is multiple people five or six right right and i know what you're telling me plus your employees uh that come running out of the basement employees (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's your first giveaway you know 
go with that. Um, and and I, you know, I, I did I did believe them mainly because it was such an unusual piece. Okay. You know, if, if this was like a, this was a you know a sofa somebody brought from Sears, you know, yes. I wouldn't believe it. I really I wouldn't. But this was such an unusual. And again, the fact one person made this and it must have taken hundreds of hours to do. I wish I wish I I, I, I wish I had photos of the bottoms of all these drawers. Just the woodwork was was a, uh, it all burnt into it. it. Was phenomenal. It was just it was it was gorgeous. It really it should have been in a museum. But but. I think this person who, my guess is, whoever had made it was just so passionate about it, and part of him or her was just still there. Sure. Um, and wanted it to be, you know, it's like, don't don't put me in a fireplace. Let me ask you something. How, how old would you guesstimate that that piece was? Oh, I, I easily turn of the century. Really? Oh, century. okay. Yeah, 19, 1890, 1910. Mm-hmm. So it had an arts and crafts look to it. Okay. But it was really more folk art, which is different, mm-hmm. um, in that it's so there's still there's mass produced arts and crafts, but not folk art. That was just a one of a kind. Right, uh, right. That's what I was um, getting at. That yeah. that whoever like um, this wasn't like a factory produced, uh, you know. No, no, no. And personal and kind like of I thing. Said, it, and but a couple things you know, kind of winding back to it was after the writing class, I realized there was a different way to tell the story. Okay. And so when people read the story in the book, and it's it's rather an involved story, and there's a little more details in it, but it okay. gives you the Reader's Digest version of it. But it's a different way to tell the story. It, those are still the facts of how they occurred. Right. Um, but uh, I still get it as a retailer. This is just, you know, for someone calling saying, I'm, I'm, I'm calling you up, uh, but I'm not bringing this item back. So, and, and this is funny because her husband kept saying, well, then what are you complaining about? Right. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, what did she, she wanted to what, make sure. Like, you, <laughs> well, you know, here, she's asking the same question you're asking now. What was this about? Right. Why? What? And we don't. These things are title of the book, inexplicable. Right. There, there, some of these, there aren't answers to them. And, you know, maybe we... Maybe we wouldn't even want to know. <laughs> right, right. In other words, you, you, you know, you didn't find a hidden note in one of the drawers that no. said this was made by, you know, uh, like, you know, and then that's the, da, well, the and, end of the story. And, and, but, but strangely enough, perhaps somewhere, someone <laughs> can transcribe what is written on the bottom of all those drawers. Sure. So actually there is kind of a note. It's really, it almost seemed like a story that's written on that. But, you know, it's, it was, again, it, it was almost like hier- hieroglyphics. Right, and, and the reason why I also lift. asked you is that yeah. I, I imagine that sometimes, like you said, especially somebody with your expertise, you know, you know, I know that this type of uh, desk, for example, was manufactured from this year to this year, and usually it was by this right. either this craftsman or this fact. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You narrow it mm-hmm. down. Totally. Oh no, no, I could say, oh, this was Stickley. Stickley mm-hmm. did this in 1910 to 1915. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, and I'm I'm no expert either, but. But just generally, but again, it's different with. with well, you with never know. Art. Maybe some it's writer be, poured out their soul you know, on it, and it wasn't the manufacturer; it's the person that was. Could be, or using you know, it. or just it's a kind of a, um, you know, just a frustrated craftsman. It's <laughs> probably a frustrated writer, so I'm just going to write my story on the piece of furniture that I made. Yeah, it's like you I know, know, but but it's uh, it was a fantastic piece of furniture. I think it's a I think it's a an interesting story. <laughs> Let me ask you, do, do you ever, I want to ask you this question, since you said that this, basically, this desk was brought in by somebody. Yeah. Has anybody ever brought something to you, or, same thing, you go to visit some place, like an estate sale, that you've seen a piece, whatever it is, and when you see it the first time, it's like, wow, and then when you get, there's something just off of it, and you just, the, the vibes are not right. Or are you being? Um, are you going to be the businessman, which is what it sounded like? <laughs> You're going to be the, the well. You know, there was, a, there was a, there was a piece that came in, and it was from uh, the. Um, it's a little disturbing, but the um, and sometimes they are. Um, he was a, a, in a in a courtroom. He was a sketch artist mm-hmm. in in trials, right. and um, very very talented man, um, and very intriguing pieces of art. I mean, really for having very little time i'm guessing he probably did these very quickly and then later on kind of fleshed in the colors and whatever they were they were really well done but on the backs of them he would put what the trial was about oh, and those were very just 
very disturbing. I bet. Because it was, you know, the I, the one that I that I ended up with was um because I liked I I liked the art. I didn't mm-hmm. didn't really look at the back of it. Um, and it was about the the death of a child, right? Um, the murder of a child. Okay. Um, and uh, by I think it was the father, mm-hmm. um, just abuse. And um, I I I I still have that piece. Right, because people don't realize just, they don't allow just, cameras during the trial. So you know, no, exactly, yeah. Um, so and um, you know, again, not that the piece isn't well done; it absolutely is. But mm-hmm. I mean. If this is this was this man's art, and he's reporting, yeah, I mean, it this really was is, his job. You know, he's, it's yeah, it's it's news. Yes, <laughs> it's back, you know, and this is a thing from the. Uh, I, I'm going to say it's from the late '60s, okay. early '70s, something like that. So it does have it has some age, but but that was one where I didn't realize what it was until I probably wouldn't have bought it. And mm-hmm. again, that's not a paranormal thing. That's just a your preference life thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, um, and then I've had people bring in things that were just, you know, horribly inappropriate. Um, uh, I can imagine you must have seen some things come in. Just dead. Um, well, I had a guy come in one time with, and he had, um, he had a, 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 a pail, a bucket. Okay. And he brings out all these little brass photos with covers on them, right? And he had a whole pile of them. Well, I mean, instantly I knew, well, these are what, you, what people would have on the tombstones and cemeteries. And you, where you lift up the little brass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's I know what you're talking about, that they swivel there. off. Well, so I'm not saying, yeah, and I'm not saying he did it, but someone went through and you know, just to face the cemetery, for God's sake. Okay. Um, and, and it was, I just said, get out. <laughs> I mean, I would never buy, no. Right, buy. yeah. It's horrible. You know, put them back. Oh, I just thought it was, may, maybe he did, I don't know. That's but, a whole lot of but, stuff. To- <laughs> so, yeah, and I mean, they are beautiful, but they're beautiful, they should remain right where they were. So, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, um, and uh, people, you know, have looted cemeteries for you know decades. Yeah. But, um, um, but there are things that come in, and you just uh, no. <laughs> well, uh, recently I was re- I was writing an article, and one of the things that involved was part of it was Jane Spansfield, and later on. I- and I didn't know that this was not a col- uh, this was not an antique shop, but it, it ended up in a um, a company. They they closed down by now. The, the out in Hollywood called Dearly Departed. They would do two tours and they had like mm-hmm. a museum. Mm-hmm. They ended up yeah. with James Mansfield's car, okay, yeah. which was totally crashed and, and supposedly even had uh, some type. They they were saying it was her blood, but you know whatever. And they had it. What this? What she got killed in the '60s, and it was like what 50 years later. And I was like, man. It's, I, I hate to say it, I know for some people the morbid stuff is attractive, but at the same time when you oh. start really thinking about yeah. what took place with it, you're like, hey, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I mean, there are, you know, and I, I don't I don't appreciate these things either, but I mean, there are serial killer museums, oh, yeah. and, you know, and there's collectors for a lot of, there's a lot of kind of, I, I'm generalizing, but I have young people come in and ask sometimes, and it's in a, but they're in, it's always in a kind of a goth way. Mm-hmm. I look at it; it's almost as if in terms of like a fashion, right. you know, they have something that's that's Jeffrey Dahmer or John Wayne Gacy or whatever, and people ask because both of those are regional, you know, to Chicago, right? Um, those, both those stories, so they'll be, oh, you know, you ever get anything? And, and, and no, and I don't want to, but um, yeah, people people collect them. They're pretty strange things. Yeah, it's like nah, uh, everything's been bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, how many things? How many personal items do you think these uh, serial killers had? By the way, <laughs> that's, that's right. But but like Jay Mansfield's death car. Yeah, right. That was like I didn't know that. I, know. I was like, whoa. Um, well, James Dean's death the car. The little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah, know where that's at. That and disappeared, and I don't think it's it ever surfaced again, did it? That that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. But again, in these moments of of, of sudden death, mm-hmm. I can certainly see residual things happening. Sure. Um, I think that's one reason that that they do. You know more about that than I do. But but um, uh, yeah. So you know, I just even say with uh, you know the estates I've been, it's 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 some of them really. It, it's how how recently something has happened or not. You know, mm-hmm. because I've gotten into places that's been there's a chapter in there about the Edgewater Hospital, and um, 
and I got in there in, I don't know, 2000, 2005 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that was a place that had, you know, a a hundred-year history because it started as a hotel, like a very upscale hotel, and then it was, then it kind of went, fell into disrepair, and then this doctor buys it as a private hospital, and that was, he was very successful with that for a while, and then that, his business kind of uh, lessened, and it fell in disrepair. And okay. that's a place of just, uh, and there's, I understand now there's a, I think there's a whole podcast series on the Edgewater Hospital in Chicago. Right. But I was in there, but I was in there very early. Um, and here, I'm by, I'm, I'm not, wasn't there on any, anything paranormal. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, right, you were just. Trees and desks and, uh, and uh, uh, coat trees and chairs and uh, tables with chrome. You know, you always think all those medical places, they had all the chrome furniture. Yes. You know, from the 50s, all that chrome mm-hmm. furniture with the kind of uh, it's sticky le- uh, vinyl uh, upholstery. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, I sell that. I that's what that. I sell. <laughs> and it's, yes. it's actually kind of deco looking. But, um, mm-hmm. but that place was definitely, you got the vibe, no matter where you were in it. It was, uh, it was it was the middle of summer, and it was so cold in there. Um, that's the one thing I uh, remember. And then I mentioned, I mentioned a couple other things that, that – um, happen there and that's a story in and of itself what and what i like about if i may is that of some course. of the things i write about if people are interested in it google it there are there's more stuff out there about this is just my experience you know in a place a public mm-hmm. place like that at least um there's so much out there um so i think i, I add a little color to it because again you know i was there fairly early you know into it um and uh and one of the actually the, the, the one reason I mentioned it is when I the, even the title of the book I said vintage fails, and mm-hmm. people said what's a vintage fail? And the vintage fail is the thing you didn't buy, okay. the thing you should have bought. And there was the painting of the gentleman who uh, uh, owned it as a hospital, and there was this oh. fantastic painting in the lobby that I could have bought that afternoon. I oh. could have. I didn't even ask about it mainly because I was so spooked and I wanted to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking that home. <laughs> I'm not, I, yeah, it's just, but in retrospect, that's a vintage fail. I, mm-hmm. I absolutely should have bought that because that person's presence was so clear. Um, uh, he, he, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, do you again, come across a lot of these properties? And, 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 you know, in recent years with this show about the hoarding, people don't realize that there's people out there that are hoarders, like ugly hoarders, and then there's other people that I call nice hoarders in the sense that they're very um, methodical and very organized, but they hoard. Have you ever come across any um, properties like that where it's like... Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, Then there's the ones I also call high-end hoarders, where the things there's like actually lots of nice things there. Mm -hmm. There's just so much that you can't even move. And Mm -hmm. those, those are good. Those are good. Okay. But, again, you know, when you're dealing with, you always say this is a business of relationship. And when you're dealing with that, the person who's still there and they, they know they need to downsize because they're going to get evicted or whatever, right. it, just like the show, very stressful. Yeah. And they don't want to part with anything. Yes. And oftentimes it's not even about the money. You can be offering them, oh, offering them good money for things. That's and they're it. like, no, no, you don't understand. I found this. In, yeah, you know, they know the story behind everything. Too. Oh, uh, everything! You're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. And I'm interested. I'm a story guy. I'm interested in stories. <laughs> it right. needs to be a good story. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. So yes, yes. But and but the uh, but to the opposite of uh, yeah. The, again, there's a there's actually a um, a little story in the book uh, about uh, and it was a woman who was very from what everyone said it was just very very sweet. And it mm-hmm. wasn't that she was a hoarder per se, but she took in a homeless person that she'd met on the street and felt bad for him. Okay. And he came in, and he was the hoarder. <laughs> oh. And he proceeded to fill up her house with just garbage, just everything, because he lived on the street, and that's what he knew. Yeah. I'm not judging. That's just what people have to right, do. Right, no, you so see them. Could, you see them in every city that they yeah, push along yeah. these um, carts. The and they're carts, and they'll the, pick, the, well, yeah. you know, I, I know yeah. later on I'm going to need that milk cart. You know, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they've got it. But so that, and then because he needed money, he started breeding uh, pit bulls in her basement. Oh, my God. And that was, 
that was then the end of the house. And it was really, really nice Chicago oh bungalow. Oh, my God. What, nice she, that town. The end of the house. Um, and then she passed, and then we're in there. And that was, that was kind of a hazmat situation, in that when we show up, we were given booties to put over our shoes. Oh, yeah. and, 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 well, and what's funny is masks, which we were wearing masks well before COVID. Let me ask you thing. How long was he in there, just out of curiosity? Oh, he was... Yeah, you know, it doesn't take long. No, I know that. That's a couple, <laughs> couple, I'm going to say a couple of years. Let me tell you, um, you know that saying, no good deed goes unpunished? Oh, boy. God, my mother used to say that all the time. <laughs> but, but Marlene, this was, you were just walking on garbage. I mean, you're just walking on it. And the, the people who were there doing the clean out had shovels. Oh. And they would shovel this stuff. And then we would go through that, which now, even now I look at it, that was just so unhealthy and risky <laughs> of know, us to I do. Know. But and then but then there's a piece of really anything of value mm-hmm. I think he had taken. Okay. So there was very little you know, any kind of textile or clothing is ruined right. in that. I mean, we think we found some little pe- couple of pieces of costume jewelry and uh I as I say, sometimes the only thing I come out of this place these places with is a story. Right. <laughs> um, which which and, Yeah. People don't realize that that hoarding, um yeah, you take it up wherever you go. Yeah, yeah, no. um, and um, yeah, I, 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 I think about that place so often because it was just one of the worst hoarding situations. Oh, there was a, what were there? Um, uh, uh, there were some kind of animals in the attic, um, a po- a possum and her yeah. babies, and so we had to stop so that we get the service people to come and catch the animals and then let them out into the woods. It just you know. <laughs> But and I, here I have another. Uh, there's another story. Not that it's a hoarder story, but it's right. actually an animal, the animal rescue story. Uh, that I get a, a, I get a dog and a bird and all these. So it's a, this is an interesting business. I, I always say I, I was going to tell you. This. See, this is the kind of stuff that because you do this for a living, you know, if everybody thinks that where you go to is these estate sales where everything is like in its place, but I, I'm sure you find I, situations that you're like, oh, okay, I, I, do I really want to go in here? It's you too. Yeah, yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. Um, yeah, every every day is an adventure, in, you know, in, in in that respect. And then here, and then we clean it up, and then it's put in a showcase, and it's presented to you. You know, I think it's funny when people come and say, "Oh, there's dust here," and I'm going, "You have no idea what it took for us to get dust." Yes, seriously, dust <laughs> yeah. um, to get this piece here. But yeah, but I don't really look at it, and and a lot of antique dealers, uh, I'm friends with. Jeez, a zillion people here in town and in New York. And um, many of us feel that this is almost like you're rescuing something. Yes. Um, and that it was like that it's a puppy or a kitten. Yes. That when you're, you're giving something another, something that really would have been lost, and you're giving it another, another life, mm-hmm. um, and it goes on into somebody else's life, um, I mean, this is the ultimate uh, recycling business. There's yeah. nothing greener than the antique business. And I think over the last couple of years, especially with younger people, mm-hmm. they totally get it. Okay. Totally get it. The landfills are, are filled. <laughs> we don't need to be doing any more oh, of that. Oh, let me tell you and, something. And I tell everybody, you know, you know, when you're a little bit older, there, you, there didn't used to have to be so many storage spaces before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> you know, you would maybe, you would hear somebody maybe storage if they were moving, but this was a very rare thing. Oh, now you've got a storage yeah. unit, uh, one of those storage oh. unit buildings, just oh. about every corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a huge business. It huge is, and if you we'll think it's just this. because what people I'm... are in transit, no, there's people that already have a home. No. no. And they have exactly. a storage space and, also. Well, and look, there's like half a dozen storage shows on, on, on mm-hmm. TV. Um, right. I'll, 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 I'll tell you this, I don't think it's any secret, but mm-hmm. maybe people don't, people don't know, and I'm not saying all of them, but... We 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 we've, we've propped TV shows and movies, and we've probably done 200 films over 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 the years. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of things we're we're doing this week for shows that'll be coming out, like on Netflix. Um, but we've been approached by storage shows just to prop out um, those those units, those storage yeah. units, which we would which we would not do. I would not. So I mean, they want to rent rent things to put in. The, <laughs> so well, no, but you know, coming fake, back to that, you were saying you know, that sometimes people get there's so much stuff and that they get, and it's not even it's because they're quality, you know. And then they it's like before, you know, you just had enough as 
you know, unless you had a hoarding problem. I'm talking the t- typical person. Basically, you had what could fit in where you lived, whether it was an apartment or a house mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or whatever. Right. And maybe if you wanted to get a new piece, you'd get rid of an old one and move stuff around. And that was it. You know, or stuff got broken. But if somebody right. would have told you, hey, by the way, you know, one of the best, best businesses there's going to be is that you're just going to have empty warehouses where people will pay you money every month, sometimes for years, mm-hmm. to store mm-hmm. things there. Yeah. Forever and yeah. ever. And you're like. Yeah. And, and then generally, let's be honest, it's crap. Because yeah. if it was things that you really liked and needed, it would be in your, in your home. Of These course. are things you didn't. You didn't. You needed another blow up beach ball, and you know, your, oh, yeah. you know, your third lazy boy <laughs> recliner, you know, or whatever it is. Yes. You know, I mean, very often, and I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Like, I shouldn't say that I rarely get anything from a locker. If I do, it's because someone's called me up and said, "Hey, I have a dining room set mm-hmm. that I bought from you ten years ago, and now I'm moving, and I need this. Would you buy it back for me?" Right. That's happened to me. Sure. Um, but yeah, huge business, huge business. Yeah. Yeah. No. But, well, they. But they they, um, yeah, I, I, you know what, and I hate to say because, you know, you mentioned that thing about a lot of these storage programs. They make it sound like there's treasures everywhere. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think that's the exception yeah. rather than the rule. No, it's the, well, that gets into what part of reality TV is yeah. real. Well, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, some of it, but I'll be, I'm being kind. I know. Um, <laughs> because something like that, well, there was, because we've, we turned down things and that was something we turned down. I said, I'm. No, I'm not doing that. That's just participating in a fraud, as far as I'm concerned. But, right. um, um, and there's plenty of other decent productions that come along, and generally, the, generally, the prop people there that they work so hard. Oh my gosh, it's, I'm, right. I'm always just amazed. People have no idea what it takes when they're when you're you're looking at something on TV. To talk about just the the time and effort to create just that. Oh yeah, shot. just for just either a half scene. an hour or whatever. Yeah, for yeah, or, or thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, um, we did a Dairy Queen commercial a couple weeks ago, and I mean, it was just very involved. Oh, um, wow, Dairy Queen. I mean, why would it not be? It's a you know, it's a it, it's a it's a it's a business. Yes. But um, but I love the fact that media is now reflecting more vintage. They're showing more vintage, mm-hmm. and then I mean, with your listeners will just watch TV, look for things, and you'll see like Let me these aren't things that got from. Yeah. Have you done it for movies, like for props, for oh. for films like oh, that? Uh, two, we've, we've done 200 films. I could, I, uh, wow. we wrote, wrote the Perdition. Um, really? Tom Hanks. Yeah, um, that's right. That's... Only, the, only, the, only the Lonely. I mean, I'm going back. We yes. did uh, Oprah's first foray into scripted television, which is called Brewster Place. I think it only lasted a oh. season or two. Um, I got, got things for, I, actually, we sold Oprah, uh, a custom-made um, kitchen set that sat 24 people. So you, made, you know, those, those, those you, know you don't dinette. find that that you often anymore, them. do you? <laughs> oh, you, well, a custom one, you don't. You don't. You don't I mean, for those, that many people that those. seating for that, that's 24 custom-made, and then uh, they put it in a bowling alley for one of our reading groups. Mm-hmm. When Oprah had those reading groups, right? So, I mean, we go back. We go back. <laughs> um, and again, we did. We, there's, we did two last week, two big shows. Um, uh, we did Fargo. We did almost every season of Fargo. Okay. Um, that's been uh, shot here. Anything that's shot in Chicago, they're going to come through. I mean, other people do too. There's plenty of other places. Right, that, right, that, right. That they rent from, but but we're a, we're a major source for for these things and have been. Um, oh, I, 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 and also like a lot of really lousy movies. I'm naming some good movies, but we did, well, we did the Ch- oh, the remember the Chucky movies, the little crazy little doll. Yeah, yeah, around? yeah. Yeah, we did this. Yeah, we propped out stuff for. Ch- and then people say, "What? Is, what was there?" You know, I don't even remember. You know, it would be like a rug that Chucky sat on. You know, he's right. there on the floor sitting on a rug. Yep. Um, so, right. They're trying. Yeah, they're trying um, to relate all these sequels or whatever. Yeah, it's a lamp in the back. Remember that scene? Yeah. You know. So, um, and then some clunkers, some things that have never been released. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's so interesting, because yeah, um, yeah. It, it, Let's say exa- that 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 movie that you mentioned, Road to Perdition. You know, we're here talking Prohibition, yep. and there's us like you, you you like you said. There's a certain flavor that you want to portray when you shoot this movie, and you think absolutely everything that's there. You know, the it's not just the actors or the clothing; it's the everything. Yeah, and uh, that there's the scenes there where a number of them were shot at a, in a mansion in uh, Evanston, mm-hmm. uh, right off the uh, Northwestern campus. Um, and everything went went there, and those were just for those those scenes. Um, uh, gosh, 
you know, I think we rented them a sofa. So it's kind of, these yeah. things come back to me in, in flashes here. Um, but, uh, and also, you know, I, I kind of now understand why a movie costs $100 million. Oh, yeah, those budgets. Like, what did they do the with all that money? <laughs> of just for all, you know, all this stuff. We did uh, almost all the John Hughes films. Really? And John Hughes was, was lovely. And in that, um, and sometimes we got to meet these people, and sometimes we didn't. We didn't. But but um, John Hughes would buy everything, okay. And then at the end of the production, he would have an auction really? of all the props, and then he donated all the money. Oh, that's nice. He would have that's, he, that's... He, had, he had like a specific charity that he created. Yeah. That was so so it was great because he got Hollywood to, to cough up this money to buy this. That's stuff. a great idea, though. Because it was yeah, and he's really one of the few people that would do that. Um, um, some of them buy, would buy things and then they try to sell for more money so they can make money to pay for the clunker of a movie that they made, you know, and that doesn't work out. But, um, and then of course a lot of them rent, but, um, mm-hmm. uh, I, I found though recently they tend to buy things because oftentimes they need to reshoot scenes right? and you don't need to come, you don't need to go, well, we brought that thing back and then I sell it and then they need it again. It's so like, no, it's, nah, like, yeah, oh, it's, it's, no, it's better is. just to keep it. Yeah. Um, that's a whole other, you know, um, side business. I mean, there's a number of, again, that's so um, interesting. people in town that do this. But Chicago is a big, um, um, until until 9-11, we were just, it was gangbusters. And then after 9-11, all mm-hmm. the, most of the productions went up to Canada. And it took a number of years for them to come back. And, right, uh, of yeah, course, I know what you COVID, mean. You know, COVID shut things down, but now it's opened up again, gangbusters. So we're just busy, busier than ever. I was in Chicago like 2005, 2006. My son went into the Navy, and he was training, you know, at the base that's right there uh, mm-hmm. north of Chicago. That's a, the big yeah. uh, Navy base. So he yeah. did his boot camp there, and, you know, I went in there to see him graduate. Because, of course, he did it right, fresh out of high school, and he was my youngest kid, and I was like, yeah, all right. You know, things that children make <laughs> you do. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, and yeah. so I went to Chicago, <laughs> and... Then right after he came out of, you know, and we had a chance to, like, walk around, like, the downtown area, which is beautiful. And then, of course, right after he finished boot camp, he, he finished right in time to come home for, like, the Christmas holiday. And he went to play soccer with his friends and broke his ankle. So mom on New Year's Day had to fly with him back to the base because he was on crutches. Um, and that was my second visit to, to Chicago. Oh, no. It was That's great. I tried this great Philly sandwich. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you need you need a better trip than that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, but uh, I, I, and we I went we went along that road that goes along the shoreline. What is it? Um, right. Lakeshore Drive, Sheridan Road, Lakeshore yeah. Drive, and Sheridan mm-hmm. Road. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did that drive, which is beautiful um, because we did it like in November. And, and well, and then coming up from that far north, you would come back through all those mansions, right? In Kenilworth and uh, uh, Winnetka. Oh my gosh, um, yes. there are some. I. I it's one of my favorite things. I mean, I'll, you know, I always, I'm like, there was a Warhol line that, you know, I'd show up for the opening of a door. You know, that's, um, so, uh, you know, in that, I'm always, if, there's, if something's open, if there's a place I can go to, I want to see it. But, you know, when, oftentimes it's these little, you know, little cramped apartments or little houses. But if I can get a chance, chance to get into a, a, like a giant apartment or a huge right. mansion, I get all excited. <laughs> I, 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 I really uh, enjoy the architecture of, of it. And again, they're yes. old. These are all old houses. Oh, yeah. I and imagine so, so. Old houses. So they're just big antiques to me. Um, exactly. Uh, and even, I mean, here in Chicago, I live in a building from, that was built in 1927. Uh, mm-hmm. And in um, 29, at the crash, right. they offered 50 year leases. If you just stay oh. here, fifty-year leases. Wow! And it was, but you know what? That was brilliant because so from twenty-nine to seventy-nine, it stayed in families. Yeah, it stayed it in did. multiple generations of families. And then seventy-nine, eighty, it went condo. But the building then was kept up, yes. where there are other buildings that did not do that of that same yeah, age. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like basically owned in a way. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was a huge commitment. I mean, mm-hmm. this was a, in this was in when this place opened in twenty seven. It was the most expensive rental building in in town. Like wow. politicians and baseball players, you know, lived here. And uh-huh. um, I, you know, and I just and I remember as a kid going past this building, going, "Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine living here." And and now I do. <laughs> there you but go. yeah, I but I love that space. That's really yes. my point. Is that you know, and I, I you know, you just in 
encourage your listeners to it. So it's like you get an opportunity to get into it in an old house just to walk through it. Yes. Do it. <laughs> yes, of that course. might not be there, you know, a year from now. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Market, they, right? they, um, um, yeah, they, uh, when I, before I moved to where I moved, because I moved in the last few months, I lived in a hundred year old farmhouse down in Homestead, which is like the agricultural belt of Miami. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was, and, and I was able to dig up, thank, thankfully, because now there's so many newspapers that, you know, you can do it online, because if I had to do it, you know, I found the original owners and how they had come from Ohio. And um, basically, they were growing oranges. And mm, we bought it from the guy. The, he sold it. He, he, the gentleman died and his wife died and then her, his kids because he had like 30 acres out there. They subdivided. They sold it. And eventually, his great-great-grandson bought it, who, which mm. is who we bought it from. And he lived there like 20-something years. And wow. he redid it. He he really redid it because it's uh these old wooden farmhouses. People don't realize that, you know. After a while, you got to really stay on top of that. If these properties, if not, oh, they'll sure. deteriorate. So oh, we were yeah, lucky. Absolutely. He uh he got he he bought the house in uh, ninety two when Andrew came through. He bought it just in mm-hmm. time to get uh, plowed by <laughs> Hurricane Andrew. So he kind of didn't have a chance, but he really renovated it nicely inside with the wood and it had the what they call South Dade pine. And we mm-hmm. lived there. Um, we lived there for like 11 years, and then I moved up here to where I'm at right now. And this little town, it's been around since the 1880s, it's called Citra. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've dug up a, every once in a while we've been digging, and I, I'll find bottles and stuff like from 18, 19, 20, you know. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people, people don't think, don't realize that, you know, like, um, you know, modern uh, garbage uh, disposal, like pickup. Mm hmm. It's not, not. It wasn't always around. In other words, no, it, no, it really didn't exist. Not, not in the so a lot of people would end up burying stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, people don't think that that you think, man, yeah. because everybody's so used to. Well, you put it in your garbage pail, or you know, your yeah. whatever, and then oh. you. Yeah. And are there the bottle collectors? Yes, exactly. <laughs> on Facebook. Oh my gosh. The right, collectors. right, and so, it's like every once in a while, totally I'll go, oh, what's that? You know. Well, and, so people uh, say, where did this, where does this stuff come from? Somebody dug it up. That's where it came from. Yeah, you dug some of it up. Yes, right. Yes, and uh, right like there. I said, it's people right people don't realize that disposing of a lot of these items, it's not like it's, it wasn't always like that. Um, no, no. We um, uh, what was it? Uh, when we were about the property, they had some. Um, they had like an old like a uh, pole barn. You know, mm-hmm. and we we got somebody. We said, look, it had kind of collapsed. And, we had somebody come in and they say, look, you, you need to take that all away, all this debris, you know, and everything. He found an Indian motorcycle in there. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I was still in Miami. I hadn't come down, you know, because we oh. would go back well, and forth. Well, that's a mortgage payment. <laughs> and I was like, he calls me up and he goes, guess what I found? And I was like, what did you find? He goes, 11 vacuum cleaners. And I'm like, okay. And an Indian <laughs> motorcycle. <laughs> Now, you ask me what would somebody need with 11 vacuum cleaners? I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, it was. But like, an Indian, but an Indian motorcycle. Lots of people want that. Yes, and then you know we discussed. Yeah, and he was like, but I was like totally unprepared because I thought it was just gonna be like household junk, you know, stuff right, like people. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, people well, don't realize that's. Been <laughs> yeah. But you know, like, well, that's but, you know, that's what I do. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, here's here's. How about some exercise equipment? No. How about a vacuum? No. <laughs> you know, and then somebody pulls something out, and you go, oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah, you know, it's, it's incredible. You and you will, you'll have people that they'll keep junk, and then I'm, I'm sure. God, I'm. I'm sure you were aware of this. Amidst the junk, they have this couple of stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, oh, it you got the most, that? It, it could be the most surprising thing, too. Yeah. It could be any, it can really almost be anything. It's yes. just kind of strange. Yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, I wouldn't. That, and sometimes, like you said, they, they, they have it, they have it not because they realize exactly the vintage or the mm-hmm. antique value. They just have it because they like it, or maybe their grandmother gave it to them and they just kept it and whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And yeah. um, well, it's I had, I had a, a we were in a, 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 a really a clean out, and the the woman who was doing the sale 
there was a, what were they, um, oh, person had 500, I'm being kind, four or 500 uh, owls. Holy owls. Owls. So, so owls, so ceramic owl, you know, it's a candlestick, it's a, an owl lighter, an okay. owl, it's just, uh, most is figural, most figural, most ceramic, but there were carved owls of that. And honestly, I was, she just kept begging me, you need, you need to buy these owls. <laughs> now, and I like collections. Collections are important. I always say, you get one thing, you go, eh, you get three, well, that's interesting. You know, you get a dozen together, they kind of become something else. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what that is. I'm sure there's a word for it. But you almost put, a, you know, 10, 12 of something together, and you go, oh, well, it's now a collection. You know, one yes. isn't a collection. Three yes. is a collection. A dozen is a collection. And I went, and she gave me a really good price, and I said, oh, I'm going to regret this. I sold every one of those homes. And you're like, man, if I would have known. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know what? To this day, we have done about four or five years ago. To this day, I have people come in and say, do you have any of those off? <laughs> yeah. And it's because um, probably, now probably, I, probably I they're the, one of a kind. Either they're not manufactured anymore. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing of it was is that I put them in, I just put them in, in a case all together, just like they were. Uh-huh. Just like the collection. How I was showing them, going like, and say, this was someone's collection. Now... You know, unfortunately, there, there's interest in owls, clearly, um, and flamingos or certain mm-hmm. things, you know, alligators. Um, but, you know, it's uh, bears, um, but turtles. But <laughs> I should stop. But, yeah. I, but there'll be things that aren't. You know, just want to be clear. You know, someone has, a, you know, I don't know, armadillos. <laughs> I don't have anybody asking for armadillos. You know, elephants, yeah. of course, elephants are popular. Yes. So, you know, there's kind of just these, these little pockets of interest that if you know, and that one I just kind of stumbled on, um, but but that's one where I like really wouldn't think anybody's going to care. And then and what do I know? You know. Well, really. you know what? So I, ha- I have back in the 1980s. I'm going to say the 1980s. This is when Miami Beach used to have a lot of older people. Because remember, once upon a time, Miami Beach was really known for as a retiree yeah, for kind sure, of place sure. before before Miami Vice, before our you know before. Yeah. It's, yes. Yes. So they used to have a, um, basically it was a, it wasn't it wasn't an antique shop. It was a place where you would basically like what you said. People would donate their furniture, you know, or they yeah, would like pick up store. yeah something like that. But store. they mm. used to have a lot of old furniture. I don't know if it's because so many of the older people live there. That they, they what they specialize in was actually furniture, furniture like bedroom mm-hmm. sets, you know, tables. Yeah. And there was this a really big space. They were known for like they were they you call them up, especially because it was heavy items, and they pick it up because they knew mm-hmm. it was for some people to. And I remember I bought a couple of tables there, but talk about unusual, weird feelings walking around there. Mm-hmm. That was one of those places yeah. that it was like every once in a while, you know, you'd look over your shoulder and you'd be like, oh, God, what, you know? And that happened to me because every once in a while I would go over there, and like I said, a couple of you know, there's only so much furniture you can buy, as which is what they sold. Uh, but nice stuff, older stuff. Yeah. Really yeah. well made. And it was like, eh, I'd be wandering around in there and, you know, you're just, you know, you're always poking, thinking yeah. behind there, I'm going to find the, uh. yeah. and it's, every, you know, and sometimes, usually on the weekends, you had more people walking around in there. But if you went on the weekdays, it was kind of, mm, kind of empty in the sense of you could be over here and then maybe there'd be another customer over there because it was a really big, Yeah. I don't know how many times I went in there and after a while, and it, not all the time, not all the time. But there were right. some days that I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> and one time I remember I was um, I was looking at a coffee table, which I eventually bought. It was one of those rounded coffee tables. And I remember I mm-hmm. bent over because it was low. And I felt like somebody touched the back of my thigh. Okay. And it was like, I'm not against anything. I'm, I'm not, uh, there's nothing. I remember I was like, you know when you straighten up, like, man, somebody touched me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I left. And I came back that weekend later and, with my husband and I bought it. But... Yeah, I, it, it's really weird when you say the paranormal. It's not like in your face or weird. It's just no, that sometimes it's, you get this feeling like I'm not by myself. Yeah, here. it's very subtle. And um, they, uh, I do think I totally get this in what we were talking about earlier so with furniture. Mm-hmm. And again, if you think about like the amount of time someone spent, you know, I'm not saying that your cocktail table, but, but yeah. with a piece of furniture, with mm-hmm. again, when I talk about a, a desk, sitting at that desk or sitting in that chair. Your furniture, you just kind of, kind of I think bond people also with used to keep the their years. furniture longer so, too. You know, oh, oh, um, yeah, totally, totally. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, 
that's the kind of comments that I would get to. I've had people say, and it tend, well, the other thing I've noticed with, with, with all the, when I said about all the people who have, have had some type of a experience, um, it's almost always a young girl, mm-hmm. and they'll say somebody touched my hair. There you go. Um, um, and I think I think it's a I think it's a child. I think it's a young girl. Okay. Um, and uh, almost everybody. It's happened to me. It's, it's happened, it happened to my store manager. He was funny. He completely said, would just think like baloney when people would tell him this. Uh-huh. And um, he'd come downstairs and he'd say, what do you want? I'd say, what? And he says, you called for me. I said, I didn't call for you. And that I've noticed. She'll call. Yeah, she'll, yeah. you'll, you, you, she, she knows your name. Right. So I get this little, I get this little Dwayne. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. I turn around and I'm like, or hey. Which, by the just way, that, in, in, the, in the paranormal, that's not that's not that's an intelligent haunting. That's not a residual. Yes, you yes, know. Yes, that's why I mean. I think it's I, I think it's a young girl. I think she probably lived in that apartment when it was an apartment, mm-hmm. and um, and I think all these things coming in energizes her. And every once in a while, and it's always yeah. by, when someone's by themselves, never a pair or a group of people like yourself when you were by yourself, mm-hmm. and it's place is empty then they're comfortable enough to go and communicate yep. yes so yes. and i think honestly i think these things are lovely yeah, I, 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 I mean I, it I wasn't do. it wasn't um, a bad feeling no. it's just that when you're by no. yourself and you feel like yeah. i'm not by oh, myself yeah. no 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 and no it's the same thing i the, the one i had two incidents one was my name and then the other one was that uh it sounded like like a mirror fell off the wall, but like right next to me. Mm-hmm. So this horrible crash. Okay. I always say it was like that, or if like you had a big pile of keys in your hand and you threw them on a concrete floor and they were, they were smashed. It was yes. that. And then I jumped and there's okay. nothing, nothing, nothing fell off the wall. Nothing. And I mean, I looked all over the place going, and I'm, just, I'm trying to convince myself that I'm missing something here, you know? Um, but it was just to get my attention. Sure. Um, uh, so, I think that was probably just the most vivid. Um, and again, this is of what twenty some years that I've had two experiences, so I don't think that's a lot. No, it's not. <laughs> but it's not. Um, but I every time somebody asks me a question, I'm going, "Oh, here we go." <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah. In other out. words, yes, I've already heard some version of this already before. <laughs> yeah, like I said, like, and that okay. that well, in and of it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll say. Did it happen in the two little rooms above us? Yes. It's always. And, oh, and very near this little corner, this little mm-hmm. corner that just seems to be the spot. So, and I go, oh, yeah, and, okay, and it's fine. I've had people get upset. I mean, upset, scared. And others just going like, well, that was interesting. Right, well, you know, just, <laughs> and that in and of itself lends validity to it because, like you said, this is different people, different times, different. Yeah. And they don't go in right. there looking for the experience. They're looking you at, know, at antiques. And here. And I'm talking to you about this, but this is not something that I talk about. You, that, you know, I, I've not, I don't promote. We don't have tours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> next thing, <laughs> we don't promote this. You know? Next thing you know, you get you people know. calling you up. Hey. hey, yeah. So I mean, I mentioned, and I've even that I've only mentioned since the book, and I don't write about it in the book. Okay. So it's, it's just that's a per, kind of you know I've had some other personal experience that I can you know, talk about, but you know it's that. It's, to me, that's more of a public thing because it's happening to the public. Right. Um, but, um, yeah. But, well, that's... I, that's, I, I, I think that that, 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 that is that's so... That's what I mean, um, selling dead people's things. <laughs> that is so interesting, Dwayne. And, and I want to thank you so much for for spending this time with with us. It's been great. I love those stories. Oh, and I've been showing... Oh. Um, uh, I'll have a link to your website on the credits of the show. But for my podcast listeners, what is your website address? Oh, so it's uh, sellingdeadpeoplesthings.com. Okay. And I've had a, a, a slide going over showing the cover of the book. Okay, so Excellent. people know what a, what a groovy. I love the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to, <laughs> people can follow it on, uh, there's, a, a, there's a Facebook, uh, there's a couple Facebook groups for it. Oh, really? For the okay. book. And then there's for the readers. Somebody started a reader's group. Interesting. Um, for it. It's a selling, set, selling dead people's things. And I want to give a shout out to, uh, it was a complete female crew that uh that pulled this book together for me really my editors my proofreaders the um uh the uh the the, the cover art um uh yeah it's there's six six women got together and got me through this and made it what it is so, so are you gonna do book two uh, 
You know, I, I'm, I'm kicking it around. Um, COVID kind of threw me off base because oh, I didn't okay. want to keep my business going, mm-hmm. and I did, and that's great, and we're fine. Um, but, um, yeah, I yeah, definitely have some ideas, and I've, I've had a number of requests for it, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of more open to it than I was, uh, I, I think, a year ago. And, again, you know, talking to someone like you, it kind of energizes me that yes. perhaps I should. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Again, it has been wonderful to speak to you, and I want to wish you the best of luck. And uh, again, you, um, if you write another book or if not, because I, I loved hearing those stories. I wish you would come back. But either I would, way, I, I want to wish you the best of yeah. luck. Thank you. This has been a joy. Likewise. Had a great time. You take, take care. care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Wow. Oh, here we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, we had kind of a little bit the other um, system that I use, which is uh, StreamYard. For some reason, it was not cooperating with his computer thingamajigger. That's why I, I don't have a, a, the camera version, you know, like a for him talking. So I did the picture thing because it was like, okay, this is not working. Let's fall back on plan B, which is the phone. Let's get back to basics. But anyway, I think it's such a great idea. Those stories are fantastic. And, and uh, I'm sure he's got, <laughs> I'm sure if he's got, after 30 some years of doing this work, I'm sure he's had, has a lot of stories. And like I said, you know what? Sometimes you have stories that are very, very much obvious that they're paranormal in nature. And then you got other things that are really subtle. And um, they're not like in your face. You're like, like I said, uh, when I used to go to this, um, basically it was like, I want to say like a thrift store uh, back in the 80s, <clears throat> Miami Beach. And this was when Miami Beach had a lot, a lot, a lot of older people. people a lot of older people lived in the beach. And, um, and again, which is what I said, also this was around the time period furniture was well made and people kept their furniture for years and years and years and years. Okay, so when, and the point I'm getting to is that a lot of the furniture that ended up there used to come from people dying and the families, you know, if they lived in another state, they would come and they would just sell everything inside the house, including all the furniture. So you would have a lot of beautiful pieces, by the way, very well taken care of. So this thrift store, they, uh, they, they were huge. They had a big area. This was not like a little, no. As a matter of fact, I don't think they even had clothing. I think they were strictly just furniture. And... Um, Sometimes I would go in there just to browse. Because let's face it, how much furniture, I mean, you can only like. But sometimes I would go there and, you know, see, just to see if I can come across something. And and I, like you said, when I was alone, because, you know, uh, sometimes on the weekends I would be with my husband or my mom would go with me. And, you know, it was just different. The vibe was different. There was more people walking around. And there was a couple of times I was like, Oh man, my imagination is running away with me. Hmm. And you know what? It's really funny because people say, back in those days, this was, I, I tell everybody, the 80s was my baby, baby producing decade. And as anybody will tell you, when you have children, especially all back to back, like, you grow eyes in the back of your head. You, in other words, your senses are like, to the nth degree because you're always listening, you know, like because you're trying to this multitask, you're listening, your kid, you know. And then, so I don't know if at that time I was more hypersensitive. By this, I don't mean I was hearing things that weren't there, but I was picking up on stuff just because I was doing it all the time because I had small children. So um, I know that there were times that I was like, ah, oh, you know, man. You, you know, you'd see me, I'd be like, you know, I wouldn't do one of these whip around things like what was there, but because I felt stupid because it's almost like quiet, you know, um, and you, I'd do one of these like, hmm, I'm looking at that piece of furniture over there. But really I, what I was doing was I was trying to look behind me in this big space behind me because I felt like somebody was looking at me from behind there somewhere. Okay. So I'd be like, no, there's nobody there. And then of course, every once in a while you would hear somebody talking and I'd come way on the other side of this place. It's like, and uh, they, they they really didn't have a bunch of employees running around. They they had employees, 
usually like towards the front where you paid and if you needed help you'd go over there and you say hey look can you help me uh load this or you know how much you know whatever but you really didn't have all these employees running around so that's what i'm saying there wasn't that many people around and uh and there were days where was, there was nothing and then there were other days where it's like man I- i'm leaving because i feel like somebody's got like eye on me <laughs> and you'd walk away and you'd be like hmm and then you'd be looking at stuff. And, and, and what happened, ended up happening is it became so distracting. It was like, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not, enjoy- I'm not, I'm not enjoying my shopping moment. Uh, and I would leave. I would leave. Um, and there was another time that uh, I went to, this was an antique stop, an antique store. This was, again, in the 80s. Uh, and it was the lady, the, the, the lady originally was from Philadelphia. She had moved down here. And she had had this shop for years and years. What she had was she had taken, she, she was like in, uh, one of these older strip malls. And she had taken up two shops. In other words, she had knocked down the wall between what would have been two shops. And she had everything there. She had a bunch of stuff. Furniture, painting, uh, bric-a-brac. And I remember um, we would talk a lot. And when I, I would, sometimes I would go over there every once in a while. I would, because she was real close to my job. And... I would get out at 5, and this was around the winter time, where by 6, 6.30, it's dark. And the reason why I'm saying this is, again, let me go back to, when you have little kids, you don't go to antique stores. <laughs> don't. It's like, yeah. So what I would do is, I would stop every once in a while. After I got out of work, I'd zoom by there real quick and just talk to her. And, oh, what do you got? we just touch a chat a minute, and i keep going, because that was my only time when I was sans children. So I remember one time, it was already, and she was like, she uh, she said, oh, stay with me, I'm, I'm closing up. Because she usually had another employee that worked there with her, but that day, that person was gone. And uh, she says, oh, just wait for me, and I'm going to pick up everything. And, you know, she had, uh, so she had uh, turned off the lights on the, on the on the other side of the store. And she only had, like, a couple of lights on over. Like, in other words, it was like, if anybody stops by, this place is closed. And I'm just there, and uh, she's puttering around, and she's getting her stuff ready, and all of a sudden, I hear something. She had stuff like paintings and things hung up on the wall, you know, on the, uh, uh, you know, on those walls on the side, and all of a sudden, I'm sitting, and something falls off, <laughs> falls off, and I remember I looked at her, and she looked at me. And I, I'm because remember this place is empty. There's no customers. There's no other. Um, there's nothing else. There's no wind. There's no air conditioning. There's nothing. There's no vibration. There's no um, somebody moved a piece of furniture that moved this, and then that made made that, you know, fall. <laughs> remember, I looked at her, and she looked at me, and she's like, "Oh, it's that picture again." I was like, "That picture again? What do you mean that picture again?" I was like. So I was like 23, 20, you know, I was young. I was like, what? And she goes, yeah. She comes out from behind this desk. You know, her thing. She, she waddles over. She's a chubby little lady. Real sweetheart, though. She goes in and she makes her way through this thing. And she pulls up this picture. It was like about like this. It was oval. All right. And I imagine it was a reproduction. It was like a... You know the times it was it was it was like a a a, a painting of a young girl uh, like a, a young woman um and she, the way she was dressed it looked like yeah, it was like uh the the style of dress like you know from pride and prejudice like 1800s edwardian times you know the under the you know okay uh you know that 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 kind of uh so it was a reproduction I, i'm sure it was an original but it had you know the cold um, frame on it. I was like, oh, it's. She's she does this one of those size things like, <gasps> yeah. She, and I go, um, and I'm thinking, okay, you're gonna tell me why this thing fell off the wall. And she goes, now nah, I don't. I just don't know what to. Uh, and, and I think it was, but she used to have a guy that used to go out sometimes, like what Wayne, um, what Dwayne was saying. She, ha- I don't want to. I don't think it was her husband, but it was, she, it was a family member, somebody who would on the weekends go to garage sales and different places and estate sales, and he would pick up all these items if he found anything and bring them back 
In other words, the guy was doing the legwork. And um, basically, he uh, he bought this picture. And it, she says, like, I don't even know where he got it from. He just bought it. In, in. And she goes, and she's, she tells me, that happens all the time. Uh, whoever stays here behind by themselves closing up, that thing falls off. They hear weird noises. She'd had one girl that uh, she w- would bring in, like, during the summer, who, like, ran out. Like, she says she heard somebody whispering. <laughs> whispering which was i reminded me of his story of the 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 employees come running screaming from the basement and um and it was when you looked at it it was just this pretty girl with this little ribbon in her hair and she had this dress and it was like this and it was it's very i want to say for lack of a better it was it wasn't like an unusual picture it was just like if you were gonna decorate your house in that style you'd hang that and she goes and I you know it's just I don't know what it is and I said but is it always that picture because I'm thinking maybe there's something in here that she goes it's always that picture and I said well maybe it's so she goes nope tried hooking it I've tried hanging it in other spots I tried she says I thought at the beginning it was for some reason the way that it hooked the she goes I've it's it's gone around the walls here where I hang stuff it's made the rounds and she says and it always usually happens at the end of the day like when somebody's leaving and it's quiet like this in other words oh you mean that they want to make sure that you realize that this she goes no it won't happen in the middle of the day it won't happen when there are customers there she goes the only thing I've had is that a couple of people tell me hey (laughs) that picture the eyes follow me around and I said well maybe it's one of those you know that on purpose they were painted to have you know the, the 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 the, the the subject of the painting that they're they're like they're following you with their eyes she goes no it's not painted that way and I looked at it sure enough it wasn't and she goes and she goes more than one person has come up to me and said hey that painting she's like she she would act like dumb which painting <laughs> that painting <laughs> the painting its eyes are following me around she'd be like really I hadn't noticed that before. <laughs> and I, I and I never forgot that story I never forgot that story because when um, you know and of course by comparison this lady had a small a small business compared to uh, to Dwayne but it, it, it was one of those things where it's like mm, you know uh, and it was it was a nice piece it was like but knowing what I did it was like no I'm not gonna find out you know what, what what's going on with that but anyway, and there's my story, my paranormal story for the day. Again, guys, um, if you want to uh, get links to any of the episodes, whether it's on videos, on a podcast platform, there's I'm all over the place. But if you specifically have certain uh, podcast platforms that you use, I have links to all of that on the website, MiamiGhostChronicles.com. If you want to listen to any of the shows, whether it's Stories of the Supernatural, Nightshade Diary, or supernatural story time you can go to those each website and I have links to the actual mp3 files without commercial interruption where you could either download the mp3 file or you can just click it and listen to it like on the browser and you don't have to listen to um, to any commercial interruptions because this is what happens when you know some of the episodes go through different podcast platforms is that then they they you know you get the advertising uh, so, and again, uh, if you have stories, if you have uh, any recommendation for guests, uh, Marlene at MyMigosChronicles.com. I have great, great um, guests lined up, and hopefully I will be able to take pictures of the chicks, and I, know, I just don't want to, like, I don't know, I just, that's a weird experience I had there. But anyway, and, um, and again, uh, the 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 book is in progress i'm hoping that by september i'm going to be releasing that uh, film noir motor murder number two and i've had a lot of requests that people say oh why don't you do shows about some of these old time murder stories you know these old time true crime unsolved whatever stories um because it's great because sometimes i don't have time to read (laughs) i don't have time to read and I, i if you you know i want i want you to talk about them because i like to listen to them uh, or you know and or see the video 
So I'm going to be trying to work that in somehow into the uh, episodes between, you know, the guests and things like that. So again, guys, I want to thank you for coming back every week and spending this time with me. You're all wonderful. And I do truly appreciate the time that you spend with me. So take care and see you next week.